of us want to be that perfect mom or dad, and a lot of those changes or those improvements we want to make, they take time, day in and day out, practicing. Well, forget about that. We want to help you make some changes right now, today. Studio 5 relationship coach, Dr. Matt Townsend. Oh, look, I wore a suit for you today. Yeah, we appreciate getting dressed up. Yes. The doctor. You went on vacation, so you had to like work some of these things into play. You oh, know what this is like. Yes, you know, this parenting thing, it's hard. It is. Why don't they tell you that before you have kids? <laughs> and they do, but you don't listen, right? Yeah. So there's there's a bunch of tools. Now, one of the keys, and by the way, this is a Stephen Coveyism, right? Sharpen the saw. First tool, first tool that we need to have as parents is we've got to sharpen our tool set. Most of us aren't skilled enough to do this. So that means sharpen your tools. Have you ever heard the quote, sharp tools make light work? As no. a latchkey kid, I, I grew up, you haven't heard that? I've so heard many hands make light work. Many sharp hands, tools sharp tools. Guess thing. who told me that? Norm on this old house. When I was a little kid on PBS, I'd watch this old house with Norm. And he said, sharp tools make light work. Lots of hands do too, but even sharper tools are better than that. So, um, but the tools, so what tools do we use as parents? The whip, yeah. the belt. <laughs> oh no, gosh. those are bad tools. What are they? What are some tools? Well, there would be discipline. Discipline oh, would good. be a big tool. How about just your patience? Oh. How about just you being physically strong enough to just outlast your child in a discussion? How about any of those stamina? tools? So what if we just had some patience? What if we had our own sense of what's right and wrong? Those are some tools I'd work on. For example, I'd get some sleep. I'd make sure you're physically strong, you're healthy. I'd make sure that you actually have some space. Have you ever noticed that you make worse decisions parenting when they're all in your space and you don't have time to make the decisions? So some time management skills. I'd go out and gather some tools and some skills. Time management would probably be one of the best. As a parent, do you know how to say no? Do you, Darren? I said no a few times yesterday. How'd that yesterday, go? Yesterday was a rough day at our was house. It, was it a no yeah, day? Yeah, it was sort of a no day. Isn't that crazy? I'm totally the automatic no guy. So the minute my kids come to me, my first answer is nope. <laughs> <laughs> and then they go ask their mom, and it's always yep. <laughs> and so do you guys have the skills they and just the tools? Bypass you they just bypassed you. They totally do. Yeah. I mean, when was the last time you took a parenting class? There are parenting classes out there about how not to hover, how to discipline, things like that. We've got to have sharper tools because if we don't, we're setting ourselves up. This next tip was intriguing to me because yeah. in some ways you, you, you're kind of saying, if I understand you right after yeah. reading your notes this morning, that we are shaping a society of somewhat selfish parents. Yeah. Yeah, I think. What does that mean? Think of that. A lot of parents are, they, they don't like the servant role. They almost think that they shouldn't have to serve. Look, I'm the parent, honor me. So you get me what I need. Um, I want people to, as parents to embrace your role as a servant. You're there to serve. The reason you're the parent is because you're the one that's in charge, right? You're the one that should be serving. What better way to fall in love with your children than to serve them? You've talked about that before. All if your relationship struggling, struggling in any relationship, mm -hmm. serve. Serve. But the problem is we're too selfish. So we're like, well, when's he going to serve? Well, I'll serve, but one of the kids is going to serve. And then we kind of throw this weird loop out where we say, I just don't want to create spoiled children by serving them too much. Well, okay, but really, what's your real motive? Is your real motive to just make sure that you're being taken care of? Or are you just going to finally embrace the role that parents give, period? You serve more. You give your heart more. Your job as the parent is to be the master servant. So what's the balance then between serving and spoiling? Because I well, think that is totally a key concern concerned. these days as well. Watch. Well, that, was, that would come back to, do I, all, do I even know other discipline styles? Do I know other parenting styles? Do I know other motivating styles? If I've done the first principle and sharpened the saw, mm -hmm. I can then serve you with all of my other skills and still make sure you're learning motivation, still make sure you're disciplined. But I think our problem is we are getting more selfish as parents because we're stressed and this is what about me when do I finally get my break but the problem is I guess in the end you're not gonna probably fall in love with someone you don't serve and so I think a lot of us begrudgingly serve and so I think that actually doesn't create love it just creates a little like disdain for your children <laughs> last thing you want when your children are leaving is to have disdain okay, right? let, me, let me tell you part of the problem that I run into exactly like you said we start getting stressed and we have so much on the plate yeah. we've got so much that we're doing and then and then the kids come needing some help that's right and we have a hard time planning with them or doing anything with them getting out got of so it. much yeah it's huge and so one of the, my next rules is very simply parent from your peace not your planner so many of us have a set planner you've signed your kids up for so many things yeah the planner is set the schedule is set so instead how do you actually start making your decisions not from what is scheduled and set, but from what is in your heart? 
That's one of the hardest things I've ever found to do is how do I actually treat you the way you need it today, not basically just what we've structured because of our history. So one of the rules with that is what if you could find some time every day to just be calm, find some peace, go make some really good food, sit in your comfy little space and ask yourself, what's the most important thing my heart is telling me to do today to love my child their way? And then now watch, now all of a sudden that your conscience, your essence, your spirit is starting to decide what's the most important thing today, and you do, not your planner. You do this apart from the kids. This uh -huh. is doing yeah. your own little happy place yeah. so that you can actually come up and with And you the right can answer. do this as a husband, you can do this as a wife. What's the most important thing I can do today to love Marty her way? And I let my heart dictate, not my lo logical self. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes the logistical, the logical, the lo logistics, the analytical self doesn't necessarily bring you the heart. So to get to the heart, you got to find a peaceful moment and ask it. When you're sitting in the car waiting for the carpool and you're waiting for your kids from their sporting event, ask yourself, big deep breath, what's the most important thing I can do when they get in the car to connect to my children while we're driving home? And then just sit in quiet and let the spirit or the essence whisper to you and it'll say whatever. Turn off the music and ask him one question or whatever, okay? Powerful so that's, that's starting to lead from your heart, which by the way, I think most reasons why parents are so mad at their kids a lot of the times uh -huh. is because we're not leading from our heart and we're very selfish. And when you're selfish, you get angry at yourself, but you take the, pa the pain out on everyone else. So builds. we're actually getting mad at our kids because we're not cutting it, we're not doing what how, we should do. How as a parent can you become a better listener to your child, to your teenager, uh, to any age, kind of yeah. open up those or fine tune those listening skills? You know what, number one way I've ever found to do it is practicing it. So I can teach you how to listen really well but in, in it really in order to do it it's like riding a bike you just need to get on the bike and do it so one of the rules I, I last rule we're gonna give you is listen to understand don't listen to respond most parents are there we think our role is teacher I want you to put the role as teacher about five spots down and just have your role first be a servant compassionate understander first teacher second remember you um, in order to influence somebody you must first be influenced by them and I don't care how much you know until I know how much you care so you never have power with anybody anyway until you have gotten into their heart so we listen the best way ever I've, I found to, to learn to do that is just force yourself not to talk you've been given two ears one mouth your ears were meant to stay open mouth was meant to close God's telling you something <laughs> um, so just shut it and just listen try your best to have, use this line you know what let mom and dad think about what you're talking about for a minute and then we'll t let, let me come back tomorrow morning and I'll let you know how we feel. Don't even allow yourself to answer their question, a big issue. Don't allow it to even be answered today. Let me just hear from you today. Good stuff. Man's always got great stuff. Good That's why stuff. he wears a suit and they come doctor. That's why I wear a suit and they come doctor. You got a special right. deal on your website right now. Yes, I really do. And I wish I remembered it. It was, um, <laughs> oh. Access to all your Access workshops, to all of my all stuff. stuff. So I've got all of this content, 80, almost 90 hours of content. It's 27 bucks. If you go to it, you have access to everything I teach, every date night I've done, all of these things. You go, you watch it, you test it out, you try it. My $450 workshop is on there for $27 a month. Cancel anytime you want. But I'd sit down with your partner, start learning some of the skills, go through the women's classes, 27 bucks, cancel anytime you want. An opportunity to sharpen those skills That's for right. just $27. Dr. Matt Towns. Tell in Thank you so much. Thanks, We're going to continue to, you know, celebrate Work that title. Yeah. yeah. We'll be right back.